Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ancestry.com on our Facebook and live stream accounts. This is Ann Mitchell, or you might know me as Ancestry Ann. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the common questions or some of the most common questions we get in our ask at Ancestry.com, which is how you can get hold of either myself or Krista, who is our barefoot genealogist, who will be back with us in January doing more demos. I'd have to say there are three really common questions. One is, I believe I have Native American ancestry. How do I go about proving that? And Krista has done a really good presentation on this, and you can find it on our, li on our live stream channel, and our, um, I've linked to it on the Ask Ancestry and page on the sticky notes blog so you can also go find it there I'm gonna leave that one to her because she's a bit better at that than I am another really common question is when does the 1940 census come out which is a good question and I know it's something most of us are waiting for the US federal government has decided that census records are not available until 72 years after they were taken so the 1940 census will be available for public viewing April 2nd, 2012. Now, we will be getting digitized versions of this and we will be getting the non-indexed version up online as soon as we can, should be sometime in April. And then we will be working feverishly with a bunch of different people and partners to get it indexed and make it available to you as soon as possible. But it will be available this year starting in sometime in April and it will also be free on Ancestry.com so for those of you who are just getting started and want to take a look that will be available to you. So those two questions very common and then I have to say the third is how do I find relatives past 1850. You know when you're digging in the 1800 and the 1900 censuses it's pretty easy well not pretty easy but it's easier to find who it is you're looking for. But those pre-1850 relatives, well, they're a bit of a challenge. Now, we spent some time in another episode, and you may want to look that up, talking about how to use the 1840 to 1830 censuses to sort of determine who it is that you're looking for. But there's more than you can, you can do with that. And if you haven't seen that episode, I suggest you go back and look at it. But you don't need to have seen that to find this one useful. So stay with me and I'm going to do some live demos which may or may not work. We always know how those go and let's see if I can give you some more ideas on how to use this. You'll notice the title of this one is Using Online Trees to Help with Pre-1850 Relatives. I want to show you how to gather your information so that you have a better idea of how to research these people. Alright, so let's begin. Alright, so the example I'm going to use is the one that I used earlier. So let me refresh your memory. I have an ancestor named Charlton Wallace who was born in about 1823, 24. He got married in 1842. And I have no birth record, no death record for him. And on his marriage certificate, there's a William Wallace listed, but I don't know who his father is. So to go back and determine who, one of, who his father might have been, I'm going to go back, and we did this before, in the 1840 census. So, oops, probably should have shown you the full thing there. So if I'm on the home page and I'm logged in, and I scroll down, you will find record collections. And this is a quick and easy way to get to any of the U.S. federal censuses. Now, if you're on Ancestry.co.uk, they will obviously be the U.K. censuses. Same thing for Canada and Australia. So, I'm going to click on 1840, and I was looking for Wallace's, whoops, and I'm going to learn how to spell today, and for those of you who don't remember how to use our filters, I chose to restrict it to exact matches, for obvious reasons, phonetic, anything that sounds like Wallace but maybe spelled different, and names with similar meanings. I also knew that Charlton Wallace 
lived his entire life in Rockbridge County, Virginia. So I am going to search for Wallace's in 1840 who lived in Rockbridge County, Virginia. And again, I can use filters there. So I'm going to choose Rockbridge County, Virginia. And I choose it from the type ahead. And why do I do that instead of just typing the whole thing in? Because when I choose it from the type ahead, it allows our systems to say, oh, this is Rockbridge County, Virginia. And it knows some things about it, not just where it is, what are the adjacent counties, what state is it in, what are the adjacent states, those kind of things, which will give me better filters. And if you click on Use Default Settings, the filters you see are I can look in just this place exactly, county and adjacent counties, state, state adjacent states, and country. Now if I just type it in, the, I only get two options, which is use default settings and restrict to this place exactly. I suggest you choose from the type ahead when you have that option. All right, so I know that my Charlton Wallace was born in Rockbridge County from his obituary he lived there his entire life. So I'm going to assume that 1840, two years before he gets married, that he was hopefully living with his father unless he had passed away and then I've got a whole different issue here and that I'm going to only search in Rockbridge County. Okay. So I go down here and I press search. And I come up with eight different possibilities. Now, we had gone through and we had identified about three of these people that were possibles. And one of the possibles was William Wallace. And this was the name that was actually on his marriage certificate, though it did not identify him as a father. So this is the person that I want to work with. And we had gone through and we had looked at this in on the actual image and here it is right here. A couple things when you're in the image viewer that you should be aware of. This panel down here we call the index panel. You can minimize it or these little gray arrows down here you can bring it up again and you can scroll. This is really useful. Now here the person who did this actually had incredibly nice handwriting and I'm greatly appreciative. However if that is not the case, reading through what is actually transcribed here can help you find on the image, the person on the image that you're looking for. You can also make corrections as to what's on here. I'm looking on here and I know this says Mrs. Nancy Good and I look down here and it says somebody really messed this up, McNancy Good. So let's say I wanted to add an update. And I realize I'm digressing, but bear with me for a moment. I think it's useful information. So it was a, whoops, it was a transcription error. And then I'm going to explain it and say, I believe this was transcribed incorrectly. Oops, there we go. I do a submit alternate. It has my name on there, so if somebody wants to contact me, they can. You can also, this one has a view updates. You can see what other people have put on here. All right, so make use of that. You'll find it really useful. Over here, you also have information about one, people who have added to this record, suggested records, records that other people have, who have added this record to their tree have also added these records to their tree. So this can also be really useful. And it tells you public trees that it's been saved to. These may be people who have answers for you, also really useful in trying to figure out what's going on. There's also a source tab over here, which gives you a description of the actual data collection, source citation and where it came from. All right, so all very good. All right, but who was this William Wallace and can we track him down in other censuses and can we find out other information about him? Well, since I asked the question and this is a demo, you might assume yes, that is the case and you would be right. All right, so I'm going to assume since William Wallace was the head of the household, 
and given the age of the children, we're just going to go with the, he was the between 60 and 70. And this is the 1840 census. So if he was born, or sorry, if he was 70 years old, he would have been born in 1770. Yes, I think my math's right there. All right, so how do we do this? You could go to your existing family tree and just add him as Charlton's father and hope that it all works out. I do not like to junk up my family tree. And if I am working on a theory, or if I am working on, because I've got a bunch of other Wallaces I need to go track down here, I would like to do them one at a time. So what I'm going to do is open a new tab. I'm going to go to Ancestry.com. And I'm going to go up here to Family Trees. Uh, whoops, this is not good mouse control today. I'm going to go down here to start a new tree and I'm going to enter William Wallace. He was male. Oh, oh, 1770. Did I say 1870 before? He was born about 1770. Somewhere between 1770 and 1780. Now I could in here, if I like, put about or between something like this. There's a problem with that though, and that's not going to be useful when I do searches because I need one specific date. So I want to go back as far as I can so our birth filter doesn't cut it off. Because if you put in 1780, it's going to reject people who were born, say, in 1770. So I'm going to just use 1770. And later, when I get to my tree, I'm going to make a note about why I did that. I don't know where he was born yet. I could guess that he was born in Virginia, but I don't know that, so I'm not going to put that in. That's really all I know about him. So I'm going to continue. I don't know who his parents are. I'm going to move on. It's up to you whether you want to make this public or not. The, if you make a, a tree like this public, people may take it as fact, and you're just sort of experimenting here, so you may not want to do that. And something like this, I'll often label it as research only. That gives people the idea that, no, I'm not too sure about this. For Now I'm just going to make it private because I'm not really sure if this is all correct and I don't want to lead anyone astray. All right, so there are two views here that you can have. You have family view and you have pedigree view. It's up to you which one you want to use. So I'm going to go over here to William Wallace. Now I want to go in and make a note about the birth date. So I have that for myself. So I click on edit this person. Sorry. And vital information. And I'm going to add a description. This is from 1840 census. And he is between 1770 and 1780. So I've left a note for myself on why I did this. So that way when I go back, I can look and I can remember. All right, so now I'm going to return to William Wallace. All right, the first thing that I brought, and you'll notice that note is down here. So it's really easy for me to remember and I can figure, find it if I continue to look. All right, so what I want to do is now I want to go through and see if I can find first the 1840 census record, attach it to William Wallace, and then I'm going to go look for other records starting in 1850 to see if I can find more information about who the man was. So, up here you have search records. I'm going to click on search records. And you'll notice there's a lot of stuff that comes up here, but I don't even have a location. So the odds of any of this being absolutely accurate, sure. I'd love to think that he was uh, sons of the American Revolution, but it's a little too soon to go down that path. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to filter. And I'm going to click on Census and Voter List. And then I'm going to click on 1840. And then here it is. Now you'll notice that it says about 1775 because it was taking the average. So, I'm going to click over here. And 
and I'm going to attach it. All right, so now I've, act, I've got that record attached. Now, if you wanted to, you could go through and you could put in what I call ghost notes because we know that there is what we believe. Remember, this is just a research tree. You're working on theories here. This doesn't have to necessarily be accurate. This is just what you believe to be true. So we could go in and add the spouse here if we want to. We could add in placeholders for all the children if we want to. For now, I'm just going to leave it, but that might be something you want to do as you're trying to map all these things out. All right, so let's go see if we can find this William Wallace in Rockbridge in 1850, or the person we think is William Wallace. All right, so again, search records. This time I'm going to go into census and voter list. That was a weird one. All right, let's try that again. Census and voter list, there we go. I'm going to go into 1850. That is not the one I'm looking for. I'm going to edit my search so that he lived in Rockbridge, Virginia. And this is not the correct stuff from the type of head, so I sort of back it up. I update it and I restrict it to this place exactly. I do a search. And I'm not finding anything. So, now I'm going to try county and adjacent counties. Again, it's sort of hit or miss here, right? You don't know what you're going to find. I'm still not finding anything that looks like my guy. All right, so what should I do? I'm pretty sure if he's still alive, he should be in Rockbridge County, Virginia. Well, most likely. The one thing I don't, I'm not too sure about here is his age, right? Because his age could be wrong. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to edit my search and I'm going to remove that restriction. I'm going to change this back to restrict to this place exactly. And then I'm going to do a search. This time, I actually find a William Wallace who was born in 1786. That's pretty close. Because it could have been incorrect in the 1840 census. You'll notice I've looked at this gentleman before. I have him attached to more than one tree. All right, so this is interesting. I have a William Wallace, age 64, who was born in Pennsylvania and who lived in Lexington, Rockbridge, Virginia. I have Elizabeth Wallace, who was 63. Well, let's just go look at the record so we can look at the whole family. All right, they are up here near the top, right here. I'm going to minimize this. I've got William Wallace. Who was born in Pennsylvania, about the age of 64. I've got Elizabeth Wallace here, her, that's her married name, who's 63, and born in Maryland. Living with them, I have an Elizabeth Smith, who's 18, and a George Smith, who's eight, age 14. I doubt these are their children, one, because the name Smith is different, and two, because the ages there just don't make a lot of sense for a 63 year old woman it's possible but not very probable i also have a methodist minister living with them at the time so maybe they were methodist maybe they weren't all right so i'm going to go ahead and merge this into my tree let me back up here now again i don't know for sure that this is the right person but this is experimental, so that's fine. I'm going to choose 1786. I'm going to have Pennsylvania, and this is where they were living. All right. Then I'm going to have the spouse, and it will be for now Elizabeth Wallace. Now, again, this is her married name. It's not her maiden name, but this is the only name I have at the moment, so this is the one I'm going for. Again, this is a research tree. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to publish this as absolute. And if her husband was born in 1786, she was born in 1787, and she was born in Maryland. 
All right, so now I've got a little bit more information. Let's go back to the 1850 census. Because that census did not have specific relationships added or described in the actual census, we at Ancestry do not go ahead and merge those in automatically for you. You have to merge those in separately. So I'm going to click over here on Elizabeth Wallace and I am going to save and be careful because it'll leave you on different trees. I'm going to save this. You can see I do a lot of different trees. Uh, I do not see my tree in there. All right, for the sake of argument, let's say that my tree should be in there. It's in, and it is, you would want to go ahead and, and merge Elizabeth Wallace into that. All right, so let's then go see if we can find William in the 1860s. That's the joys of live demos, isn't it? All right, so again, I'm going to go and I'm going to do a search. Again, I'm going to go down to Census and Voter List. I'm going to go down to the 1860s. I will choose U.S. Federal Census because that gives me a better way to look here. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to adjust my lived in to make sure that I can select it from the type ahead and search only that county. I don't find a William Wallace, but I do find an Elizabeth Wallace. And that's really interesting because she was born in 1785, though her birthplace is Virginia. So I go and I take a look, and here's an Elizabeth Wallace living with a family. And again, it's in 1860, so this is a bit of a problem. But she has a Sarah, Sarah Wallace living with her and a Mary J. Palmer and a bunch of children. So if I go over here and I look, I have to wonder at this point, is that the same Elizabeth Wallace? It appears that there is no William Wallace. So is this a widow she's living with? Let's find her in the page. And if you can't find them in the page, remember, you can quickly bring up the index panel. It'll put you in the right place, and then you, you can find them. So I've got Mary Palmer. I've got Helen. I've got Annie. I've got Maggie, who are maybe children of Mary Palmer. I don't know. Elizabeth, Sarah, maybe that's a daughter of Elizabeth Wallace. One might guess that this Elizabeth Wallace is the widow of William Wallace that we saw before. And maybe the, the birthplace is just stated differently. Maybe it's just wrong here. Maybe somebody didn't know. So what can you do? Well, you can say, hmm, maybe William and Elizabeth had two daughters, at least, a Mary and a Sarah. Sarah who did not get married, and there would be Mary. All right, so we could go back to our tree at this point. And this is 1860, so she would have been, this one would have been born in 1820. Remember, this is all experimental. This is not exact. You're just trying to build something and see if this theory holds. So, you can then add in Mary, female. In 1860, she was 40, so she was born in 1820. And we're going to assume Virginia. And again, this is a stretch. This is just a theory, not an absolute. Then we're going to add another. And this would be Sarah. And she's a female. She was, born, she was 44, so this would make her born in 1816, Virginia. Virginia. 
All right, so now we have a few more people in here. Now you could actually go back and, and check your 1843. Were there females that would have fit, though they may have been out and been married by that time or living somewhere else? You can also go back to the 1830. Do they fit into that family and see if they match up? And then we also know that Mary Wallace, according to or just the guess that we would have, had a spouse whose last name was Palmer. Then we can also go look and see if there's a marriage certificate for Mary Wallace and somebody who was married to Palmer and see if that is a way that we can tie them to William Wallace. To find out Palmer's name, first name here, you can go through search records. And this, the one we found them in was 1860. Let's see if they're in 1850. Oh, wait, there it was. And she's married to if this is the correct person, an L.S. Palmer. And she had an Ellen, an Anne, a George. And then you can go back and map those. And there were also some other people living in the household. So if you go and you take a look at that, you can also map those up. And these look like they might have been apprentices, Matheny and Patterson, because they were also cabinet makers. But here's one thing that's really interesting. This Palmer was born in Pennsylvania, as was William Wallace. Now, that's not much of a clue, but it's something to look at. So the idea here is you're building your tree. And let's go back to the tree. As you can start with the theory. I'd start it off in its own little tree. And then just start to gather people and start to put things together and see if any of them have clues that might tie them to your family or tie them to whoever it is you're looking for. None of this is exact when you get past 1850. But if you want to use the censuses and the records you have on our site, this is a good way to start tracking things down and putting together these little Wallace families and see if any of them fit. Then you can take those. You can go over. You can look in our card catalog. Are there any um, family histories? Are there any local histories that might have to do with Rockbridge County or Wallace's that have any of these people in them? And you can find them by going to the card catalog, choosing stories, memories, and histories, maybe in this case typing in Rockbridge and seeing what's there. And then you can also search for those. This is not easy. It will take you more than 15 minutes to find this out. But it's the hunt that's the thrill, at least at this point. So, my recommendation is once you find possible candidates in the 1840s and the 1830s, chances are that some of them are going to end up in the 1850s and 1860s. Try and map them forward, figure out who was there, map the children backwards, and see what you can find. Always take each new surname you find you may want to put it in a separate tree and map it out that way now in the online family tree once you do find the right answer the answer you feel fairly comfortable with you cannot merge it in but if you do get a copy of the new family tree maker 2012 which i highly recommend you have something called the sync feature so what you can do is you can take your main tree move it down to Family Tree Maker. You can also copy this experimental tree down once you get it to the point where you want it. Then in Family Tree Maker, you can merge all the people you'd like, and then you can re uh, resync it back up to your main tree. It's a quick, well, a fairly painless way to get all your trees merged. Family Tree Maker has a lot more tools when it comes to reporting and a few other things that make it really useful when you're trying to assemble your family history. Hope this was useful, and I will try and find more tips and tricks for you guys on doing the pre-1850. It's tough, but it's worth the hunt. I hope everybody enjoys their holidays. We will be back January 3rd, same time, same channel. 
1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 3rd, and we'll all answer another member question, or maybe we'll do something related to this. You can also read my blog and other stories on AncestrySickyNotesTumblr.com. And if you get a chance, send those questions over the next week and a half to ask at Ancestry.com. We love reading your questions. See you all in the new year.